All right, welcome everyone to my video on RNA seq, in which I'll be focusing on the concept of mapping RNA seq data to a reference genome. So I'm going to start this video off with a little bit of background information uh, regarding RNA seq. You know, a little bit of how and why it's performed, and then in the second half, I'll really be focusing on that concept of mapping. Uh, to a reference. So if you already have some background knowledge of RNA-seq, feel free to click right here and you can skip all this background information. Um, but otherwise, if you're new to the subject, uh, let's get some background in us. So when we're thinking about RNA-seq, the first thing I'd like to talk about is really the central dogma of biology. Right? We have our genome, our transcriptome, and our proteome, the DNA, the RNA, and the proteins, right? And as you may have guessed intuitively, perhaps, uh, RNA-seq allows investigations of the transcriptome, right? The bit of the genome that is being actively expressed. The way I like to think of it is if, uh, if an organism is a toolbox, right? Uh, studying the genome will tell you all the available all of the available tools in uh, in the toolbox, right? Uh, looking at the transcriptome tells us which tools are being used, right? And then the proteome uh, at that point you're really looking at the structure of the tools and how they function. Um, so what RNA seq does, it's a really powerful tool that tells us uh, which genes are being expressed. Um, how many of them are being expressed and at what times, you know? Uh, so you could see how this could be used uh, in studies for developmental cycles or in response to different uh, stimuli or environmental conditions. All right. So how is RNA seq performed? Uh, so the very first thing that needs to be done is the isolation of RNA from uh, from a cell, and this can be done uh, through a number of different methods, uh, through using a number of different commercially available kits, all of which exploit the chemical properties of RNA molecules to isolate and purify them into a sample. And then, um, to get seq information or to get sequencing information, however, uh, the actual RNA molecule itself is not what's being sequenced. Uh, remember that RNA is easily degraded right in 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 uh, in a sample um, but DNA is much more stable molecule so what researchers often do is um, employ reverse transcriptases to generate a cDNA library a DNA molecule that is complementary to the isolated RNA so I've drawn the uh, RNA here in blue and then the generation of cDNA here in orange all right so once the cDNA a more stable molecule that represents the isolated RNA is created is generated the cDNA is um, can be input right into a next generation sequencing platform uh, the mo most predominant of the platforms being Illumina but there's also other platforms such as ion torrent PGM um, and others I can't come to mind right now but the point being that uh, the cDNA can be input into a sequencing platform and then data can be produced. And this data here is the RNA-seq data um, that we're interested in. Now, once you've generated all this information, you want to try, the next step is to make, uh, make sense of all this information, to compare it to something, uh, to understand what the biological context is. And one way to do this is to map the RNA-seq data to a reference genome. So when we use the term mapping, what we mean is that we want to align the RNA-seq data to a reference sequence. And because we're looking at RNA data, uh, ideally we'd be able to uh, take our data and align it to a transcriptome, right? But unfortunately, even for the most well-studied organisms, uh, the transcriptomes are still incomplete, right? So instead, uh, as a proxy for the transcriptome, we usually map the RNA uh, RNA seq data to a genome, and a lot of you may be familiar with some alignment software such as BLAST or CLUSTLW, uh, where you're aligning DNA sequences to a DNA reference, right? But in this case, we're aligning RNA uh, RNA seq data to a DNA reference, which presents its own unique challenges, specifically for eukaryotic organisms, uh, because during their processing of mRNA. Uh, the the uh, pre mRNA gets spliced out, right? There's intronic regions, so this requires aligners that uh, recognize splice sites or spliced aligners, right? And one of the most 
common ones to use is a software called Top Hat. So what Top Hat does is looks at the RNA-seq data, recognizes the splice sites, and aligns it to the reference genome accordingly. All right, so let me show you what I mean. So imagine we had a eukaryotic organism here that has this sample DNA and generates this pre-mRNA that has both these exons and intronic regions, right? And I've labeled uh, the sample DNA in sections one, two, and three showing that exon A comes from section one, the intron from region two, etc. right? So during processing of the pre-mRNA, uh, the uh, intron is spliced out, right? So the mRNA itself actually only has the exons A and B. Now imagine we did an RNA-seq run and we, and we generated a read that spanned this exon boundary, right? If you were to use something like BLAST to try to uh, align that read to a reference genome, you might get one of two scenarios, right? You might get this alignment here because it's seeing that this area looks like a lot like this area, but then it might fail because this area doesn't match this area, right? Because that came from this region. And the same thing on this side. This looks really similar, but this region doesn't look like this region. So those, those alignment softwares aren't going to work in this case. Instead, you're going to need a, an alignment algorithm that recognizes the splice site that might say, hey, you know what? I think part of the read comes from this region and that this is spliced and there may be some sort of intron in between that separates the read. So aligners like Top Hat are able to recognize those splice sites in your RNA-seq data, enabling appropriate mapping to a reference genome. And once all that RNA-seq data is mapped to the genome, uh, a little bit of context is given to your data, allowing for a number of different um, downstream analysis, right? So you can start looking at which genes are responsible for the RNA-seq data that you've, you've uh, generated. And uh, depending on how your experiment is set up, you can even start looking at things like differential gene expression. All right, and here's a quick summary of the points we went over today. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll get to as many as I can. Thanks for watching.